back in Newport and uh, next stage of painting. Uh, we did a pile of work just kind of in between the scenes because it's just a lot of sanding um, and prepping everything, but we're painting the inside of the fenders, the firewall, the roof, the inside of the doors, the bottom of the hood, back of the tailgate, and a couple engine parts. So once I have these finished, then I can uh, assemble the engine, make sure that all the intake piping works with the compounds, and we'll paint those as well. Um, and yeah, here we go. It sucks uh, taking pride in everything that you do because it takes a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the first step, then we'll assemble the whole truck and paint the outside. So, here we go! So Silverado was like, why does the Ford get a bus engine? I want a bus engine. We're gonna put a bus engine in Silverado. We got these rockers and cab corners from Summit. Really happy with how they fit. Back at Newport. But... How far did you drive for these parts? <laughs> Shut up. Dustin went over the track and he's like, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake. I think it's gonna look better than the Mustang, if you can believe that. She's pretty all right, so while Dustin's putting paint on all the inside pieces, all I can do is sand the box. So nice, everything's pretty straightforward. Um, away we go, 320, then 600, and possibly 800. your overlap, your gun speed, uh, the amount of coats, uh, you throw everything out the door. Okay. Typically, you paint everything at once, if you can, or at least make sure the same guy's doing it and he's paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that it took you 10 minutes to spray all that with the pearl, and that's, I think I've been here about 10 days prepping that. Yeah. <laughs> all day, every day. Everybody, everybody high fives the painter, but it's all in the prep and the body work, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is all different colored pearls, these two shelves. Okay. A million different colors. But we still had to get that one brought in? No, we have it. We can mix it. I mean, to mix the amount of paint to do a complete truck inside note, it would empty my machine twice. Oh, okay. So you might as well just order that in. Right on. Still using Ronda? Yep. <laughs> for <Always>. now. For <laughs> now. <laughs> All right, there she is. Looking good. Looking more fun than. I'm not in the present now. You guys are probably <laughs> already wondering why I do all this work. Well, the nice thing is that everything's paid for. This truck, I bought it in 07. It was the most expensive thing I ever bought back then and had it paid off in a year and a half. And since then, the truck's been making me money. And I could go out and buy another truck, but they're super expensive. There's a chip shortage too yet. So even used vehicles are going through the roof. So for less than a third of the cost, I basically get a brand new truck the way I want and the satisfaction of knowing that I built it. So uh, from here, we're gonna assemble the fenders and everything back on the cab and then bolt everything down, put the doors back on, and then we can start prepping the outside and painting the outside. So, well on our way, here we go. Okay, so 600 on a block, just to find if there was any other little pieces, found couple small, like a little 
tiny little dent there. Then 600 with an orbital, a nice slow speed. And then if there are any bare spots or Bondo, we gotta prime it again because the paint won't stick to steel or Bondo. And then we have to roll over a little 800 and then wash it. But at this point, it's difficult because <laughs> when you find a spot, you're like, ah, screw it. Just keep going because I've had enough. But um, you gotta walk away, try it, like, do it, fix it, because you do all these hours and hours of work to it, and then all anybody ever sees is those few little imperfections in the end. So, here we go. <laughs> Okay, paint day. Thought I was ready, but then uh, Dustin went over the track and he's like, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake. Because the painter's only main job is to let every body man know he didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> but, well, uh, these are just tiny little pinholes in the paint and the Bondo. So, uh, filled them up. You gotta put a little bit of self-etch on there. And then, uh, away we go. Here we go. Got Jeep in the booth right now. They're gonna spray that and then we'll tarp this off and then head over there this afternoon. Here we go. Actually looks a little pink. Yeah, that's what I thought. It does, but I don't know if you saw the parts painted. The mid coat actually changes that the pearl coat. But we were joking because uh, the last one was purple. The Mustang was purple, so now we're doing a pink truck. It looks good, good on him. This is activator. We don't normally use it unless we're doing a tri coat. And we put a little bit in the ground so the ground doesn't bleed through the pearl. It's supposed to be 5%. Kind of just winger. That? It's a hot day for a complete. Yeah. How do you find that affects things? It just slows down dry time. Yeah. Especially with the waterborne paint. If the humidity's high. I shouldn't go pearl because I uh, won't be able to keep it clean. But I think we're gonna put some ceramic coating on it, which actually helps clean it really good, really happy with that on the GTO. And I swore I'd never babysit paint again and that the C10, the patina was gonna be the next thing, but here we are. <laughs> I probably have, I think I have about 40, 50 hours of body work into this. And again, it's just a. <laughs> Just an 05 work truck, but I'm pretty excited, pretty happy by how this all came out. Like, it looks beautiful. So. The 80s and 90s trucks are coming up in value like crazy. I'm just ahead of the game. I, rather than 
completely um, having a vehicle that's completely rotten because it's already 20, 30 years old. I'm doing a frame up when it's 15 years old. And these are super hard to come by because everybody just uses them as a work truck and they beat the tire out of them. So there's, there's enough crew cabs and stuff around, but to find a long box that's not banged up is, is pretty hard to come by. So we're gonna treat this one good. Um, I will have to drive it in the winter, but we'll be picky as to where we go. And then I think we, we're probably gonna paint the Bronco and then we have another vehicle we're probably gonna paint too. So <laughs> I don't know why I do this to myself. <laughs> Hot for a big job like that. <laughs> I'm like, I could feel sweat coming out of my glove. I'm like, oh, <laughs> get him off, wipe it. Coming out of my hey, ass. You got a little Tom Cruise going? Yeah. <laughs> Don't land in the paint. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a big job for a hot tent. Yeah, yeah. Turned out really good, eh? Yeah, very good. Uh, <laughs> considering how production was a little bit slow, but the finesse and the quality of it is, is that, phenomenal. Is that a jab towards me? Or? That's, something we, <laughs> that's something we like to put our name on, our signature. Right on. So, uh, so on the Silverado, can we make it look nicer than this? Uh, it should be pretty close to it because you didn't have as much supervision on the Silverado. Yeah, I'm, I'm, honestly, I really appreciate you guys letting me work here. It's like I'm going to school and, and really appreciate the uh, uh, trying to portray how much work it actually goes into getting a nice a straight car. It yeah, you, it makes you realize what costs are actually involved. Right, right. Labor intense and yeah, and materials are expensive. Yeah, no, no doubt. And, it, and it's not what it looks like when it comes out of the booth. It's what it looks like five years later and ten years later, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. Like. That, that's your Bentley? Yes. And yes. a little accident or whatnot? Yeah, I had a little bit of damage on the left front fender. Okay. Um, I repaired that. Okay. And um, yeah, it looks like mint. No one can ever no, tell it's no. been damaged. How long ago was that? That was 11 years ago. <laughs> it looks pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the day it came out of the showroom. Yeah, yeah. Right on. We got a kind of a nice car coming up. Hoping to hit SEMA for 2022. Can you guys paint that? Uh, providing the pandemic's all cleared up, we yeah. should be all right. <laughs> I have to do the the radio yet, but just just turn it on. Don't don't start it. Oh wow! So the the Holly dash is completely with the with the engine itself. So we made all the gauges fit in the original bezels. Then we put our name on it, and then we got the Coyote, and because it's a Coyote five liter and the Roadrunner, and then all the gauges in the middle. Yeah. So really, really, really happy with very how it's, nice. Yeah, very nice. Now that's that that's a, a skill in itself. Yeah, that's Aaron. Oh, so I I wouldn't be able to do that, but Good and then job. and then this is what we wanna. That's what we wanna think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting sore already. <laughs> oh, you low ride the shit out of this. <laughs> I don't think you're taller than me. I, I just moved the seat back. Oh, but, you did that. Yeah, yeah, Rich uh, was there. Button slide. Power, yeah. yeah. Is there an exhaust on it? <laughs> What's that? There's cutouts. Wow. So it's stabbing.
You've got two or three coats of base. Three, three coats of base, two coats of pearl, and then two coats of clear on it. So layer upon layer, you start getting the uh, the unevenness. So we'll cut and buff it. But as soon as you put the light on it, all of that goes away. You don't you don't see it. You guys want more videos, quicker uploads, and I apologize for that. This is a really good opportunity for me too because Newport's willing to kind of school me on how to do things. And I've done lots of body work. 15 years ago, we did the four-door Fleet Masters. And when we did the Fleet Master, uh, we had three or four videos on the body work and they were very low views. So um, these are gonna be very condensed videos and taking out the key moments and the key points that, that, are, that I feel are important that you guys would wanna know. I really wanna give a big shout out to Newport for letting me hang out. That does keep me from building other stuff because I've got, I, I'm here two, three days a week now for six weeks. Um, in between teaching the kids at home because they're not in school. Um, so I apologize for that, but uh, I do want to show you guys everything that goes behind into making a nice, good body work that's going to last. But um, I am very, very tired from a lot of work, and Aaron is as well uh, doing all the videos. So thanks, guys.